there's a future where like the distinction between small and uh, large models like disappears to some degree. Um, and with long context, there's also a degree to which fine tuning might disappear, to be honest. Um, mm -hmm. Like the, these, these two things that are very important today and like today's landscape of models, we have like all different tiers of model sizes and we have fine tuned models of different things. You can imagine a future where you just actually have a dynamic bundle of compute and uh, like infinite context um, and the con that specializes your model to, to different things. One of the bottlenecks for AI progress that many people identify is the inability of these models to perform tasks on long horizons, which means engaging with the task for many hours or even many weeks or months where like if I have, I don't know, an assistant or an employee or something, they can just do a thing and tell them for a while. Um, and AI agents haven't taken off for this reason, from what I understand. So how linked are long context windows and the ability to perform well on them and the ability to do these kinds of long horizon tasks that require you to engage with uh, an assignment for many hours? Or are these unrelated concepts? I mean, I would actually take issue with the, the, that being the reason that agents haven't taken off, mm -hmm. um, where I think that's more about like nines of reliability and the model actually successfully doing things. And if you just can't chain tasks successively with high enough probability, then you won't get something that looks like an agent. And that's why something like an agent might follow more of a step function. Like GPT-4 class models, Gemini Ultra class models, they're not enough. Um, but maybe like the next increment on model scale means that you get that extra nine, even though the, like the loss isn't going down that dramatically, that like small amount of extra ability gives you the like, extra. Yeah. And, and like, yeah, obviously you need some amount of context to right. fit long horizon tasks, but I don't think that's been the limiting factor up to mm. now. Do you expect that it will be multiple copies of models talking to each other, or will it be just uh, a, adapt a computer solved and the thing just like runs bigger, uh, like more compute when it needs to do a kind of thing that a whole firm needs to do? And I ask this because there's two things that make me wonder about like whether agents is the right way to think about what will happen in the future. One is with longer contexts, these models are able to ingest and consider the information that no human can. And therefore we need like one engineer who's thinking about the front end code and one engineer who's thinking about the back end code. Or if this thing can just ingest the whole thing, this sort of like Hayekian problem of specialization uh, goes away. Second, these models are just like very general of, you're like not using different types of GPT-4 to do different kinds of things. You're right. using the exact same model, right? right? So I wonder if what that implies is in the future, like. An AI firm is just like a model instead of a bunch of AI agents hooked together? That's a great question. Um, I think especially in the near term, uh, it will look much more like agents hooked together. And I say that like purely because as humans, we're going to want to have these like isolated, reliable and uh, like, like, like components that we can trust. So if your claim is that the AI agents haven't taken off because of reliability rather than long horizon task performance, isn't the lack of reliability when a task is chained on top of another task, on top of another task, isn't that exactly the difficulty with long horizon tasks? Is that like you have to do 10 things in a row or 100 things in a row and diminishing the reliability of any one of them, uh, or yeah, the probability goes down from 99.99 .99 to 99.9, .9, then like the whole thing gets multiplied together and the whole thing becomes much less likely to happen. One of the things that will be really important to do over the next however long is understand better what does success rate over long yeah. horizon tasks look like. Um, and I think that's even important to understand what the economic impact of these models might be and like actually properly judge increasing capabilities right. by like cutting down the tasks that we do and the inputs and outputs involved into minutes or hours or, or days and seeing how good it is successively like chaining and completing tasks right. at those different resolutions of time. Because then that tells you like how automatable a job family or task family is mm -hmm. um, in a way that like MMOU scores don't. I mean, it was less than a year ago that we introduced 100K context windows. And I think everyone was pretty yeah. surprised by that. Yeah. So yeah, uh, everyone would just kind of had this soundbite of quadratic attention costs. And yeah. We can't have long context windows. Yeah. And, uh, here we are. So yeah, I, like the benchmarks are being actively yeah. made. One thing you can imagine is you have an AI firm or something yeah. and the whole thing is like end to end trained on the signal of like, did I make profits or like, if, if that's like too ambiguous, if it's, if it's an architecture firm and they're making blueprints, did, did my client like the blueprints? And in the middle, you can imagine agents who are salespeople and agents who are like doing the designing agents who like do the editing, whatever. Um, uh, would that kind of signal work on 
an end-to-end system like that? Yeah, in the limit, yes. That's the dream of reinforcement learning, right? It's like all you need to do is provide this extremely sparse signal and then over enough iterations, you sort of create the information that allows you to learn from that signal. Um, but you know, I don't expect that to be the thing that works first. I think this is going to require an incredible amount of care um, and like diligence on the behalf of humans surrounding these uh, machines um, and making sure they do exactly the right thing and uh, exactly what you want and giving them the right signals to improve in the ways that you want. Yeah, you, you can't train on the RL reward unless the model generates some reward. Yeah, yeah that yeah yeah exactly. You're in it like you're in this like sparse RL world where like if it never if the client never likes what you produced, then like you don't get any reward at all and like it's kind of bad. But in the future, these models will be good enough to get the reward some of the time, right? I, this is the nines of reliability that yeah, Chalko yeah. was talking about. Yeah.